Hey folks, it's Teresa, Stringfield Ridge Farm. I recently done a video on stinging nettle. And uh, I have been asked about, um, more about positively identifying it. And uh, some folks that uh, haven't ever seen stinging nettle and want to go look for it in their neck of the woods, uh, want to make sure they are positively identifying it. So I'm gonna to try to help with that today. And you can go back and watch that other video where I show uh, going out and getting us some. I was in a hurry, so I just got a little bit and tried to get through the video and, and get it done. Uh, today, I have more time. <laughs> and today I'm more time. And I'm going to go out here and get some and try to show you how to positively identify it. And I'm also gonna show you a uh, couple of the things that I do with it. Uh, talked about that green smoothie before. We're gonna make a green smoothie. Okay, um, so um, first off, I'm just at the edge of the woods and uh, I'm gonna walk out through here and start looking and find a few good spots that I can really show you. And um, of course I have my gloves, my scissors and my bag. And uh, I will be using my gloves to handle it because it will sting you. It is stinging nettle. It will sting you until you get it washed good or uh, dehydrated or cooked or whatever you're gonna do with it. It doesn't take a whole lot to get those uh, hairs that sting you um, off of there. So here we go. This is the woods around our house. This is uh, off the side of the house. There's Lee's shed, and there's the house up that way. Um, but there's plenty of foraging out here. And uh, me and Lee know a lot of it. We don't know it all. My dad taught me some, his dad taught him some, and together we know, uh, you know, some. <laughs> but, um, but there's so much out here. And a lot of it's medicinal or edible, or both, medicinal and edible and uh, good for you. Usually there's loaded with uh, vitamins and, and minerals and nutrients that are just so good for you. Uh, if I can get through the cleavers here, I got a big cleaver in my way here. So let me get through the cleavers and um, we will look around here. Let's see. Uh, lots of cleavers and lots of chickweed. That was the other thing I cho showed last time was this chickweed. Lots of that down there. And uh, of course, there is poison ivy and poison oak and I am allergic to them. What I do is when I go back in the house, I will wash good with my jewelweed soap. We'll be showing some of those things uh, on our lives. We're gonna start showing uh, a few things now and then to positively identify. Also, we'll be doing some videos on forging the wild things. And uh, so, there's just so much out here. I just wanna pick, pick, pick so much stuff. But I have to focus on what I'm out here for. And uh, so, let's see. Um, all right, there's some right there. If I can get over there. All right, here's some right here. Now, I'm gonna put on my glove real quick here. But do you see it right there? That is stinging nettle. Now, young, if this is getting a little bigger. In the previous video that I done on this, I showed it was little, looked similar to uh, mint. But uh, as it gets bigger, it doesn't. And so what I'm gonna show you right here doesn't look as much like mint because it's getting a little bigger. The leaves are bigger. Um, but there it is right there. I'm flicking off the little bugs, okay? That is stinging nettle. And um, you can see the uh, sharp tooth. Um, the hairs on the back side. I hope you can see that. It's hard to get in and get up there. Oh, there you go. You can see those hairs there. 
at the top of it. That's what stings you. Now, some people are not really bothered too much by it, it seems like. I've seen people pick it with bare hands. So let's see if we can identify this better for you. Okay, you can see how the leaves are on each side, opposite of each other. And then the next layer is opposite of that. Do you see those two leaves are uh, opposite of each other? But on that side, then you turn it, the next two are opposite each other on the different direction there. And then the next two go back the next direction. Okay, so there's a couple of ways. And then of course the leaves, I still say, like those little ones, they are similar to mint, a mint look. And there's the bottom, very veined on the bottom. Mostly the little hairs is what will tell you if you you can't mistake the little hairs and I can't I cannot get the camera to show those hairs very well. Um, let's see, maybe there. There we go. Do you see the hairs? The little white hairs are on the stem and up the back of the leaf on the veins and stem. There it is. The main way I identify it is by the hairs. So there you go. Now let's get some of this picked and get it inside and show you some of the things that we do with it. Like I said, there's lots to forage out here and there's a wild lettuce. We're gonna be going over wild lettuce soon um, <clears throat> probably not this Friday, uh, probably in the next couple of weeks, uh, when we go over some of these wild, uh, things, we'll be going over wild lettuce. We do already have a couple of videos on wild lettuce, but we're going to go over those again and try to help you positively identify those and, uh, talk about them on our Friday Night Live. And as always, be sure you positively identify and be sure you don't use these where chemicals have been sprayed. We know that no chemicals have been sprayed out in our woods, so this is where we forage at. One thing I always say about doing this, about foraging, is people are, are scared to forage because they're afraid they won't positively identify it. That's why you study it, that's why you look at it, you study pictures, you watch several videos, get you a book that shows how to identify. And once you get out there and do it, once you see it and know you've got it, you'll know. It's after that, you just know. You, you actually see those characteristics out here in the woods and, and you know. You will learn it quickly, especially by doing it. And once you know, you know. I mean, I, I, I don't mistake it now. And, and, and then when you get out there, you might see something similar. But you look for those characteristics and identify all the characteristics that you know. And, um, you know, and, and you'll do fine. Um, I just, there's, there's so much out here. It's amazing. And once you do know some of it, and you get out here and then you start looking around and it's hard to resist picking everything. I mean, it's like, I'm seeing lots of violets and um, oh, like I said, cleavers and uh, wild lettuce and I just wanna pick everything. But, uh, but I'm after a certain thing and sometimes I feel like that's the best way to do it because your mind is focused on that one thing that you've identified and you know, you know, if that's what you're going after, um, you know, keep your mind focused on that thing. Get out there and look around and see things and go, oh, is that, uh, okay, oh, is that violet over there? Oh, I'm not sure. Let me get a closer look at that violet, you know. And then maybe you take a picture of it and you go back to the house and you take that picture you just took of it right then and start searching in your books 
or online and compare and make sure that's what it is, then you go back and pick it and start looking around and pick more and more and more of it. And, um, and you'll know, you'll know. Um, once you, like I, 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 it sounds silly, but like I say, once you know, you know. So then you can find it. All right. <laughs> All right, we're back up in the kitchen with this stuff in the sink. We're going to wash this real good like I showed in the other video previously. Uh, because I'm going to eat some of this raw, well, you need to wash it anyway. Uh, but since I'm going to eat some raw and I want those uh, hairs off of there, uh, I am going to wash this real, real good, scrubbing it several times. I'm fixing to put this in a green smoothie. And uh, not all of it, of course, but, uh, and when you do, whatever you do with this, dehydrating it or whatever you do with it, uh, will get the hairs off. So, but since I'm gonna have some raw here in just a minute, I'm gonna wash and rinse really, really good. The worst thing I found out in the woods was the skeeters. The skeeters like to ate me alive. I didn't put anything on. I normally would put on some tea tree oil or lavender or a mix, mix of some of that, citronella, whatever. Uh, I have different oils uh, and I, I'll blend a couple up and put on before I go out in the woods usually. And I forgot to do that. Wasn't thinking about it this early in the year and uh, they like to eat me up. Plus the poison ivy and poison oak. I knew I got into some of that, so I come back in and took a shower. Now I'm ready to get this done. Um, I want to show some of these leaves again. I didn't get as much of this as I wanted to because, the, like I said, the skeeters were about to eat me up. So I came on in. Some of these leaves are pretty big, and that's really okay. I, I don't like them quite that big. Um, they're not as tender and I just don't like them that big as well myself. Uh, so I like to get them earlier in the spring or find smaller plants, but these are getting on up in size and that's okay. But that's why I take just the tops because there was a few leaves underneath these that were even bigger and uh, I don't like to get them too big. Um, I like to have them about that size. Okay, we're fixing to make this green smoothie up. I love a green smoothie, nothing better. Sometimes they turn out purple. I call them green smoothies. I like to use blueberries in them. So sometimes they turn out a little purplish, but I still call them green smoothies um, because they have mostly green stuff in them. Uh, okay, so there's so many different ways to do a green smoothie. It's unreal. You can put anything you want to in it. You can use any kind of berries or, um, you know, your greens, whatever you want, whatever kind of sweetener. This is actually some stevia that I grew, and that's all I have left. I really uh, need to grow some more of that and get it dried up. But uh, I, I've used honey, uh, sweetener, the stevia that I grew, uh, whatever. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is put in some of my greens. Now, here's some... Uh, uh, spinach and bok choy that I just pulled out of my garden this morning. All right, I'm gonna put a little bit of that in there. Uh, uh, just whatever you have. I like using spinach in here, but I don't have a whole lot of spinach. I had just a little bit there that I pulled out of the garden, so I went ahead and put some bok choy with it too. Here's my stinging nettle. I'm gonna put that in there, a little bit of that in there. And, um, okay, what else have I got? I'm going to put my stevia. I don't have a lot left, so I'm just going to put all the rest of that. You could put any uh, greens that you have, uh, herbs, greens that you have uh, dried up. I actually bought this because moringa don't do too good here. I did grow some a couple of years ago and dried it, but uh, the uh, plant didn't get very tall here like it does some places. So uh, I had ordered some. Now, 
Also with the stinging nettle or any of that other, you can get those like this. If you don't wanna go out and find them in the woods yourself, you can go to one of these bulk uh, places that sell herbs and, and uh, get you um, any of that. Um, so I'm just gonna put a little small bit of the Moringa. I love using Moringa and stuff. Uh, okay, I also have here some parsley that I dried. Uh, flat leaf parsley, that's good for high blood pressure. So I always try to use a little of that different stuff and uh, dried that out of my garden last year. All right, and then I'm gonna put my blueberries in. Now, I just happen to have some fresh blueberries. Most of the time I don't have fresh. <laughs> and uh, you want something, some frozen um, berries or fruit of some sort to give it that good slushy, uh, that's what I like. You could use crushed ice maybe, but I like to use my um, frozen blueberries or strawberries are really good in here. All right, use a little bit of that. Now, whatever kind of milk or or uh, whatever you, you have. I usually keep um, the heavy whipping cream uh, for stuff like this. I also have used kefir, that was really good. Uh, I have used buttermilk in here, <laughs> but right now today I have half and half. So we're just going to use a little half and half and a little water. I'm not going to use a whole lot of dairy product. I use a little and then add water to the rest uh, so that it's got a good creamy taste, but I don't get all of the uh, whatever, fat or calories or whatever. So I'm going to add a little water to this. There we go. And um, you can just mix whatever you want in here. Um, anything you want in a green smoothie. There's that little bit of nettle I had dried, but since I used fresh, um, I'm not gonna do that. I, I use berries, cause I am on the low carb diet. So I use berries only. Strawberries, blackberries, blueberries, whatever. Now we're gonna mix this up. And um, we're gonna mix this up and come back, show you what I got. Okay, this one did turn out purple because of the blueberries. Sometimes if I use strawberries and a lot of greens, it'll still be green, but uh, either way, I call it my green smoothie. <laughs> and there we go. Now, for the taste test. Yummy. It could use a little more sweetener. I used all of that stevia I had so I will probably put a little more sweetener in here and blend it one more time. All right, now the other thing I wanted to show you that I do with my stinging nettle is uh, dehydrate it. And that way I can use it in anything I want to all year long. And I just line it up here on my dehydrator. Now you can't eat these stems, but some of these are a little bit big. So I am breaking these off of that big piece of stem. It is edible, but I'm not gonna edible it. <laughs> so, there we go. I could use some stems in probably a smoothie. So it'll get chopped up anyway. And I don't need this glove anymore, I don't think. But uh, yeah, no, I don't think I need the glove anymore. Now, like I said before, some of these leaves are quite big for me. I usually get them earlier and get enough of them that I don't have to go back out there and get more, but you can use them. Nothing wrong with it. So I'll spread these out. I have six of these trays. I'm gonna try to fill all six of them up several times over the next week or so and get plenty of this dehydrated. There you go, that's what I do with it. And I like to dehydrate it and put it in anything. Soups, it's so good for you. It has so many vitamins and minerals and, and healthy for you that um, I like to put it in soups, salads, smoothies, uh, just whatever. You could even put it in, uh, dry it and put it in capsules and just take it if you want it to for your health because it is so healthy for you. And uh, also a uh, stinging nettle tea 
is good for uh, calming the nerves and good for uh, anxiety. Uh, that is one reason I want to dry a bunch of it and sell would be for a um, like a stress reliever tea. And uh, I could mix that with some lemon balm. I have a lot of lemon balm uh, growing. I could mix this with some lemon balm and make a really good uh, stress relieving tea. So uh, that's what all I'm working on. Um, Y'all give us a thumbs up, comment, subscribe. Watch us on Friday nights at 7 p.m. Central Time.